What a freaking bloodbath in the markets today, guys. We got a lot to break down in this video. Like you all saw in the title, we're going to go over what I've been buying as of late. As today, I bought four individual things that we have to break down in this video. So if you all find value, hit that like button. It really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. And let's get right into the video. So it's currently about 12.50 p.m. on the East Coast. And like I said, the markets are a freaking bloodbath, absolute disaster. The Nasdaq's down 3.5%. The Russell's down 3%. The S&P's down 2.8%. As we have the Dow Jones down 2.6%. And the VIX is now close to 30. It is up almost 11% as gold's up 1.2%. And we have silver up over half a percent. And last I checked, crypto's down a lot. I think Bitcoin, Ethereum, they're down probably around four or five percent each at this point in time, maybe a little bit less. I haven't checked um, in about an hour or two. But overall, it is a red day all across the board. And the reason why this is happening, the catalyst, is the CPI data for May coming in way worse. Well, I don't want to say way worse, but it was worse than expected. If you guys saw my video from earlier today, which if you haven't, go check it out. We broke down the CPI report a little bit more. We went over the CPI report in that video. But overall, you guys have to realize it was worse than expected. And that's why we're selling off aggressively today. And people started selling yesterday. If you guys remember, SPY started falling at about 1 p.m. Same with Triple Q. That was yesterday. And it just got even worse. You know, we kind of consolidated pre-market up until that uh, report came out. And that's where things fell off a cliff and uh, it got even worse. So at this point in time, now SPY is fighting with 390. We are about $10 away from the recent low, which was at about 380. That was hit about 20 days ago, about three weeks ago. And before that, we were right around 385-ish on uh, SPY. So we're getting awfully close to the lows right now, guys. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point next week, we test those lows or maybe even break under those lows. Definitely possible. Same with Triple Q. Look at this. Triple Q is now under the moving averages, collapsing, and it's awfully close to that 280 low, um, 280 to 285 where it was in the beginning of May, pretty much all throughout the month of May. So this is not looking good. You know, bulls are getting destroyed right now. Bears are making their money, and I'm kind of pissed at myself because, no joke, two days ago, I was super close to buying S triple Q, but I didn't pull the trigger. And right now, I don't want to dive into it quite yet, or uh, you know, chase it rather. I don't want to chase it because it's pretty overbought. You know, it, it could go higher. It very well could go higher. But at this point, I feel like it's wise for me to just sit back and wait if we get some sort of snapback rally um, in the very, very, very short term here to then maybe build a position on S triple Q if it's able uh, if it's able to pull back a bit. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And before we talk about what I've been buying and stocks that I'm looking at here, make sure to get your free stocks. If you haven't done that already, guys, you get six free stocks from Webull. They actually hit me up and they're extending the promo till the end of June now. So if you want six free stocks from Webull with any amount deposited, that's linked down below. And you could also get five stocks from Moomoo each up to 2500 bucks with a $100 deposit. That's also linked down below. And if you guys want to try out Seeking Alpha Premium, you could also use that link down below. You get 40 bucks off your premium membership, and you also get 14 days to try it out. So use that link down below. All those links help out the channel, guys. I appreciate you as always. So with that being said, cheers. Let's get back into the video. So like I mentioned, right? Today, I bought four individual, it's not stocks, but I bought some ETFs, I bought a stock, I bought four individual, or I put in four individual buy orders, right? And now that we're starting to head back down in these markets, which is good, we want to see the markets go down so we can buy more stocks at a cheaper valuation. This is good for long-term investing, right? As we've been falling now, and today in particular, I bought more VOO, S&P 500 ETF, and I always preach, well, I don't want to be uh, you know, preaching on the channel, trying to tell you guys what to do or anything crazy like that, but I talk about on the channel how I'm buying VOO pretty much all the time. Now, now am I buying it every single day? No, but I am averaging in 
every week pretty much. I buy a little bit every week or maybe bi-weekly, but for the most part, it's uh, pretty much every week. So I'm buying the S&P 500 ETF on the way down because, number one, I have no idea where the bottom's going to be, so I'm not trying to time the bottom. And number two, this is for a long-term uh, you know, or, or this is for the long term. And I'm in my mid I'm in my mid twenties, guys. So in 15, 20 years from now, I guarantee VO well, I don't want to say guarantee because nothing's guaranteed, but I'm very confident that VOO is going to be higher than the buys I'm putting in uh today. And I've been buying at this whole bear market all the way down, guys. And even during the uh bull market, this is something that it's uh, it's it's one of those things where you buy all the time and over time you get an averaged uh kind of smoothed out cost basis right if that makes any sense um so that's what i'm doing voo that's number one you know one thing i bought today they pay a 1.45 percent dividend yield as well which is nice you know that's nice i reinvest those dividends i also bought more vot this is a little bit more uh volatile than the s p 500 because this is a growth or rather a mid cap growth etf this is down 31 percent from all-time highs whereas the the S&P is down about 17%, 18%, uh, something like that. Actually now pushing down 19%. So I bought more VOT to get some mid-cap growth exposure. This is also for my long term. And they currently pay a 0.57% yield. So it's not a crazy dividend yield, but it's, it's better than nothing. And I'm reinvesting this. And the beautiful thing is if you buy these types of investments, guys, within a Roth IRA, which is by far my favorite retirement vehicle. You know, if you're especially if you're just starting out in the markets, guys, it's the best by far. Um, essentially, if you own stocks within a, a Roth IRA, this is money that you already pay taxes on. So everything that grows in the IRA, the Roth IRA, the dividends, the capital gains, right? All of that is tax free. So if you you know if you have these investments in a Roth IRA, you can reinvest all the dividends. You're not paying any cash or uh, rather taxes whatsoever. It's great. Uh, another thing I've been buying is VXUS. Let's pull this up. This is an ETF that is uh, the total. What is it called? The Total International Stock Index that excludes U.S. companies, right? Because obviously we got U.S. companies from VOO and VOT. Now we want to get some international exposure. So this went down two, per, or it is down two percent on the day thus far. And get this, they pay a three point three percent yield. That's pretty nice. And overall, this is down from sixty seven dollars a couple of months ago. It's down about 18%, nothing too crazy, pretty much down as much as the S&P 500. And what we notice is international stocks, they have not been doing well the past you know, 10 years. Usually when U.S. stocks crush it, international underperforms, and it goes in cycles. So for me, I understand VXUS has underperformed, no doubt. But if the U.S. markets underperform the next couple of years, maybe the next 5, 10 years, who knows, VXUS historically speaking, could easily outperform. So it provides that diversification for me. I wouldn't say it's uh, one of the biggest positions I own, but it is a, you know, little 5-10% portion of my long-term kind of retirement account that I'm looking at, um, you know, touching that money in 15, 20 plus years from now. So I do have, you know, some VXUS. And when it comes to individual stocks, let's get into those. As for individual stocks, I've been buying Meta, Today, actually, I bought more Meta, and I just realized I didn't tell you where I bought VOO, VOT, and VXUS, the dollar values, uh, but it's right around where they are today. It's not that big of a deal, but Meta, I bought more today at 177.25, I think is where I got filled. So I mentioned before Meta, which it used to be Facebook. Now it's officially Meta Platforms. M-E-T-A is the ticker now. Well, I guess it's been officially Meta Platforms for a while, but they officially changed the ticker. So I'm buying more Facebook, guys, and I've said this before. You know, I think Facebook in the 170 to 190, 200 range, preferably in the 170 to 180 range, I think that is a very good deal for the long term, looking three, five, ten years out. Very good deal. And I said if it gets under 170 to the 150, 60 range, 
even better, right? Bring it on. So today we saw Meta, and still, as of now, it's down 5% almost. It's getting destroyed, right? So I bought more, again, at 177.25. And currently, just to talk some numbers here, $477 billion is what their market cap is. The trailing 12-month PE is 13.3. And profit margins, this is very important, their net margins are 31%. And when it comes to Google, which we'll talk about in a second, their profit margins are about uh, the profit margin 27 and a half percent. So what we know right now is, number one, we're probably in a recession. I said this two, three months ago, and a lot of people saw it coming. It's not like it was, uh, you know, out of the blue. Right. We all we all kind of knew this was going to happen. So advertising could get hit. In fact, it already is getting hit. I'm not sure if you know, but what you're watching this video on right now, it's something called YouTube, right? YouTube, they pay creators money for advertisements, right? Unfortunately, <clears throat> I can't pick what advertisements show on the channel. And I do get comments sometimes like, oh, the ads are a bunch of BS. I know some of the ads are BS. And the truth is the ad revenue has been coming down, right? And that's kind of how I saw this recession um, creeping in. It was one of the indicators I used um, about three, four months ago. You know, I was like, wait a second, the ads are starting to come down a little bit from what they normally are. And it kind of makes sense, right? We have a lot of inflation right now. Companies are cutting back on their advertising budgets. And what does that mean? Less money for Meta, less money for Google. So I guess I might as well just wrap Google into this, um, you know, into Meta as well. So I did buy more Meta today, but I didn't buy more Google. Google I'm holding out on until under 2000, 17, 1800, or not an ounce. Uh, <laughs> that's what gold is roughly. Um, 17, 1800 a share is uh, where I'm going to be buying more Google. And again, the advertising risk, that is probably the biggest risk right now facing uh, Meta and Google. But with these healthy profit margins, these companies have a lot of cash. They're going to be fine. You know, sure, the stock could get hit more. Advertising could come down. But overall, long term, is the trend of, you know, digital advertising going away? No, it's not. It's just temporarily contracting. And think about it. Meta, they might have capped out on uh, user growth for now, but you guys have to realize how big their user base is right now. And you have to ask yourself, are they maximizing the dollars from each user that they possibly could, right? I mean, I don't think they are. I think over the next couple of years, sure, they might not be growing as many users as they were. In fact, they won't be. I mean, it's, it's just not going to happen. But could they grow how much money they make per user? I think so, right? Is there going to be more money coming in digital advertising? And are those rates going to get you know more expensive? Most likely, yes. Um, so that, that's why I'm holding Meta. Same with Google. I think those are great right now. And in terms of other individual stocks, truthfully, guys, I have not been doing too much buying lately. I've just been buying Meta. I've been buying you know those ETFs I mentioned, which I'm buying pretty much every week, two weeks. And I have been buying some REITs, nothing crazy though, uh, but in terms of individual stocks, guys, really that's it, and ETFs, that's all I've been doing, keeping it simple. I'm not trying to buy 20, 30 individual stocks. I'm trying to narrow down on companies that I understand that I have a very big faith in right now. Disney's another one, but I haven't bought Disney in a couple of weeks, um, and you know, I'm trying to just keep it to the basics. So with that being said, I'll catch you all in the next video, hit the like button, subscribe, drop me a comment, join my Patreon if you want all my moves. That's linked down below. And you could also get your five stocks for Moomoo and your six stocks from Weeble. All that helps out the channel. I appreciate you guys as always. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.